You know, it's been a long year. A really, really long year. So much has happened. I always wanted to do a year-end in review, but I'm a solo guy and I don't have the time to mix the video and the audio. <coughs> I'm sorry, my voice is a little scratchy. That's where Grabian comes in. Grabian is a great site. They're a compilation site. They sit and they find bizarre things that liberals say, and they basically put it together in a small video. You can actually follow Grabian in uh, at, on YouTube. It's G-R-A-B-I-E-N. I would suggest you follow them, follow them and make sure that they you get reminders because they are an excellent site. And I, I pulled, they have a great video of a compilation of our People of the Year, DumbassesTalkingPolitics.com's People of the Year, the dumbasses from the media. And we shouldn't call them People of the Year. We should call them Dumbasses of the Year. So this is going to be about the media. Now, there's a, I'm not going to cover it all. You can go to DumbassesTalkingPolitics.com and actually take a look at the full video or just visit Grabian on YouTube. Let's get on with it because we got a lot to go. This is Gene, and you're listening to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Hey, hey, this is Gene. Welcome back to Dumbasses Talking Politics. And I, I thought my voice would be getting better. I feel fantastic. My voice is jacked, so I apologize for that. But we're going to talk about about the best ten or twelve stories that our media pulled, all the bullshit that our media did over the last year. Now, the first one, I bet you probably don't remember this. Hey, when was impeachment? Oh my God, that seems like forever and no one was talking about it. Do you realize that impeachment was in January of 2020? Let's listen to our media and about how, I guess, thrilled they were. With impeachment, but I want to, I want you to especially listen to the language because I am going to talk about it. And by the way, I've got ten or twelve things to cover, a lot of audio clips. I am not going to have a lot to say on each. I just want you to hear the media's meltdown on absolutely everything in the last twelve months. Listen up to the impeachment crap. You're watching CNN special live coverage of what can only be described as an historic day. It will day. be a busy and historic day ahead. It was a historic day on Capitol Hill. This is a historic day here in the nation's capital. A historic and day, historic day, another historic day, historic day another historic, day. historic day. Yeah, This is history unfolding. There's a sacramental quality to this. There's a there's a, a, a ritual. I'm so glad Chris used the word ritual. Just the ceremony of it, walking over delivering the articles of impeachment. There is something almost religious to it. I think there's also something about the sort of the excommunication aspect of this thing. In French, the French Revolution, what, uh, did the guy getting his head taken off hear the drum roll? Why is there a drum? Yeah, the media was salivating over this impeachment thing. I mean salivating. Trump was never going to be impeached. He was going to be acquitted. And yes, he is acquitted. I know Nancy Pelosi is one of those. Oh, he's impeached forever. Um, no, he was impeached like Bill Clinton was. But he was acquitted, he was found innocent, period, done. And by the way, the impeachment was crap anyway. It was just, as a matter of fact, that's the sad thing about Trump, not who, my, we're going to talk about Trump being president in 2021, because I think there's a very good chance. We're going to talk about an article I read, but this is the sad thing if Trump doesn't get in uh, this year, is that. I, we could actually see a president be impeached twice. That would be awesome. Now, notice the media did a couple things here. It started out that this impeachment was historic. Then they added religious, religion to it like it's a ritual. And then, I mean, Chris Matthews, who's a complete freaking moron anyway. Uh, then they added excommunication. Finally, they added death that he was going to get his head chopped off, like in the French Re Revolution. Oh, you know, impeachment of a president, no matter who the president is, is not something to be celebrated. Clinton, it's not to be something to be celebrated. Nixon, it's not something to be celebrated. It's not a good thing, but the media did. All right, let's go. The China virus hypocrisy is a big one, and I, it's a huge one, because they rode that surfboard for probably... I don't know, seven months. But the problem is, 
They couldn't keep their narrative straight. So let's listen to this little clip. God, I love Gray Bean. Please subscribe to them. How worried should Americans be about coronavirus? Coronavirus is not gonna cause a major issue in the United States. How worried should the average American be given these flu numbers when it comes to coronavirus? Right, so the risk in this country is still deemed to be low. Okay, that is the risk. You know, the flu is already widespread in the U.S. and and it really is much more deadly, is it not? How worried should Americans be? Should they panic? Uh, No, Americans do not need to panic. There's an important context we need to keep this in, and that is that the flu Hmm. is more deadly. Yeah. So actually the virus has become more dangerous because it can infect more people. It's more easily able to take root in the community. So it's changing in a worse way. This is going to be catastrophe upon catastrophe. President Trump wrote on Twitter, don't be afraid of COVID. Don't let it dominate your life. What does that mean? Don't be afraid of it. Everyone should be afraid of COVID. Oh my goodness, Nicole. When I saw that Trump, I mean, I, I literally was overwhelmed. The White House and their calculation, this is about trying to instill a sense of normalcy. Then we all know that life can't really feel like it's back to normal. It can't feel, Americans can't feel that they have the virus under control. We have absolutely zero chance. And by zero chance, I mean zero, Z-E-R-O, zero chance of moving past this with Donald Trump in that job. Did you catch the goalposts being changed right in our mid eyes? In January, when Trump Trump closed the uh, travel between China and the United States, and he even talked about the dangers of the virus in the State of the Union speech, the virus is nothing. Biden called him a xenophobe. The media called him a racist. And the virus will never touch the United States. When the virus hits... We don't have a vaccine. We don't understand the treatments. We've been lied by the WHO. We've been lied to by China about how this virus actually works. Um, And people start dying and we don't know how to handle it. Then it's suddenly Trump's fault. He didn't take it seriously. This is why people don't trust the media. And elephants like me, we have long memories. We remember when Trump closed... I think it was January 14th or something when he closed the border between China and the United States and everyone was calling it xenophobe. Remember Nancy Pelosi was in Chinatown saying, come here, don't be a xenophobe. And Bill de Blasio, like a freaking moron, was over there. Hey, come to Chinatown, celebrate the year of the duck or whatever the hell it is. That was all happening. And then suddenly the narrative had to be changed. Because people were beginning to die, and they were beginning to die in leftist states. And they had to blame someone. The Governor Cuomo couldn't blame Governor Cuomo for his stupid-ass policies, which we'll get to later. And so, now it's got to be Trump's fault. He didn't take it seriously. And this has been such a sorry, boring narrative that they've held on to since about March. Okay, so next one. Remember those protests, right? Those peaceful protests? Uh, I, I think their coverage is funny. You really should see the video on this one to really get the full impact. But listen to this one about the uh, uh, George Floyd protests, the Antifa protests, the Antifa, uh, Antifa and BLM Riots is what they were uh, by a couple of terrorist groups. Let's listen to this one. And a far more serious scene. Uh, Watch these images. Really just an ugly, a dangerous scene at the state capitol in Michigan. As we look at this extreme group. They're not protests. These quote unquote protests. I I don't even think that that's the right word uh, because protests are supposed to be peaceful. I'm not embarrassed to say that I was afraid. It's not clear what they're demanding. Demanding to infect other people, demanding to make other people sick. Who the hell do you think you are? I don't understand what is wrong with people. Stay at home. I I, I want to be clear in how I... I characterize it. This is a, mostly a protest. Uh, it is not. Uh, it is not generally speaking unruly. What you're seeing behind me is one of multiple locations that have been burning in Kenosha, Wisconsin. That ain't a riot. What we're seeing right now in Minneapolis. You know, Brooke. I think this is a march. Really, as they're coming off, it's peaceful. They're saying peaceful protest. People are risking COVID. 
to explain to this country that we're fed up. Thank goodness for the looters, man. Any reasonable person would say we shouldn't be destroying other people's property, but these are not reasonable times. And please show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. It's the, the First Amendment. You just gotta look it up. I love this video because when the when the riots started, people were just like, at the first set of riots were when people started protesting about um, uh, being stuck inside and things like that, and those were considered just absolutely terrible things. And then you had BLM and um, uh, BLM and Antifa going at it and actually just destroying everything, and no one cared. It was okay. It was absolutely okay. Then they go into when BLM and they start rioting. These guys, if you watch the video, these guys are actually in front of burning buildings saying, for the most part, it's peaceful. Oh, my God. A lot of uh, these commentators, they just ignored the fact that billions of dollars of damage was happening to people that had nothing to do with any of this stuff. A lot of these commentators ignored the fact that hundreds of police officers were injured. A lot of these commentators ignored the fact that uh, people were being beaten, raped, or killed by these animals from Black Lives Matter and Antifa. But it might must be nice uh, to be a Democrat. It really must be nice to be a Democrat. Because the McCloskey couple who were protecting their house from these animals, who broke into their property, who could not get any police to help with legally obtained guns, are facing years in prison for protecting their home. None of the animals that broke into the property were actually prosecuted or even arrested. Now, at the end of that, they mentioned, where does it say that protests have to be nonviolent? And the guy said, well, it's the First Amendment that says that. So let me read the First Amendment, because I actually do love reading this stuff. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or of the right to pe- a right of people, peaceably a right of the people peaceably to assemble, It's in the Constitution. You cannot riot. And then to to petition the government for the redress of grievances. So it's in the Constitution. You're not supposed to riot or loot. That's what that guy was saying at the end. Uh, Again, far more impact if you actually watch the video. Now, the other thing that the uh, media flipped out about is what would happen if Trump lost the election. Uh, I guess they thought he would actually set up barriers and stuff and he would never leave the Oval Office. Uh, Not that he's a billionaire and he's got businesses, he's got things to do. I remember in the old days when um, politicians, and I don't remember in the old days, I wasn't alive, but in in the 18th century, 19th century, and early 20th century, no one was a politician for long. That's because they had careers outside of politics. But the media, oh yeah, they're set to believe that Donald Trump is going to stop, destroy the United States of America through martial law if he actually is elected. Listen to these idiots here. I think we were looking at a potentially a trial run for a kind of a genuine attempt to, 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 through intimidation and potentially through force, to try to... Uh, to try to steal this election. Uh, We have to be prepared for things that this nation has never faced um, before. And unfortunately, that could involve the use of, uh, you know, these these forces. This is, I guess, the president's own version of martial law, since the real military uh, has kind of pushed back from doing that. Is there anybody, having watched Donald Trump for the last three and a half years, who doesn't think that Donald Trump would try to employ martial law if he thought it was the only way he could stay in power? Throughout Donald Trump's entire presidency, he's been called a dictator, a fascist, a tyrant. But Donald Trump, if anything, has proven anything but a dictator. He lowered taxes. He lowered regulations. He supported the Second Amendment. He has celebrated the United States and its people as an example for the world, as a blueprint for what a great country should be. He has made 
government smaller. For some reason, he is still made out to be a fascist and a dictator. Ironic thing is that most of his detractors that see, seem to actually embrace the fascism, Marxism, and tyranny of China, Cuba, and Venezuela. That includes Bernie Sanders. That includes AOC. That includes um, Joe Biden. Trump was never going to put up a fight if he lost the election. He believes in this country way too much. And the media, they don't believe in this country. They just want him gone. This year has been a real big deal with tearing down monuments, tearing down statues, tearing down, I mean, tearing down George Washington. I'm reading a great book now called The Patriots Got, uh, Patriots History of the United States, which actually talks about things the way they were. And some things were good, some things were bad, but it mixes all that stuff up. But there was no such flip out about Donald Trump and the evils of America than when Donald Trump on Independence Day decided to go have a rally uh, at Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. Let's listen to the media absolutely flip out about this. Today, President Trump is going to South Dakota for what has become a controversial trip to Mount Rushmore. The mother of all photo ops, Mount Rushmore. And we know why this president just can't resist going there. Where he'll be standing in front of a monument of two slave owners and on land wrestled away from Native Americans. He will inevitably and predictably talk about our heritage. In other words, he will talk about he is the protector of white America. Questions have really been raised uh, about Thomas Jefferson in particular, but also George Washington for their for their holdings of slaves. In some ways, Donald Trump is a reflection of the rot that has been at the heart of, of, of our of our this fragile experiment since its beginning. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Trump is a racist for celebrating Independence Day in front of Route Rushmore because the land once belonged to a few Indians and George Washington and Thomas Jefferson owned slaves. Of course, you may notice they didn't mention once that uh, Abe Lincoln is also carved in there who freed slavery. By the way, the celebration was pretty freaking awesome. Look at it on YouTube. But here's the next one is really just the media hypocrisy. This one comes from Chris Cuomo, who has been just horrible when it comes to reporting about COVID-19. He is has always been a moron, moron. He's always been a narcissist, self-centered, borderline sociopathic. But let's listen to this little one because it's absolutely true and it's really disgusting. And unfortunately, he's not the only media member that's like this. I'll give it a step further. He's not the only politician. Most politicians are actually like this. And most of them are from Democrats. Most of them are Democrats. Excuse me. Let's listen to this little, hit, little uh, clip. All right, here is the official reentry from the basement. Cleared by CDC. A little sweaty. Just worked out. It happens. Now the other side of the story involving CNN anchor Chris Cuomo and a man on a bicycle. I said, you're supposed to be quarantining him. What are you doing out? What are you doing with all these people? I don't want some jackass, loser, fat tire biker um, to be able to pull over uh, and get in my face and in my space. <laughs> this was the actual swab that was being used to fit up that double barrel shotgun. Right. I wish I had a magnifying glass. Where is it? I don't know, but whenever you tell me you're looking for something around <laughs> me and you say you're using a magnifying glass, I get nervous. <laughs> I probably should have given you a little context before I played that clip because it actually is more worthwhile in video than it is um, in audio. But here is, in the beginning, it's Chris Cuomo was diagnosed with COVID, supposedly. I don't know if it's true or not. I doubt it. Um, I think it was all staged. 
and he is the film in the beginning shows him walking up the basement. I'm back from the basement because he spent his 14 days and uh, a little sweaty because I've been working out. You know how that is. It sometimes happens. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ. And then the second clip is uh, he, he had COVID. He didn't spend his time in the basement. He was actually out looking at his second home being built. And a biker saw him. CNN made big stink that, that Chris Como had COVID. And he's out in the middle of the street with no mask on. And a guy, uh, the guy was an ass. I mean, you, I, I wouldn't stop. Chris Como, you're not supposed to be out. Yeah, maybe, but don't do that. And he, he confronts Chris Cuomo and says, you you're, have COVID. You're supposed to be quarantined. And Cuomo goes on that rant. The last scene is him making fun uh, of Andrew Cuomo, who is his brother and the governor of New York, about the size of the nasal swab he needs to use in order to get a COVID test. They're joking about this stuff. Now, this wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for the fact that Andrew Cuomo, Cuomo's policies actually caused the death of almost 40,000 people. He was taking uh, people from retirement homes who had COVID and sticking them back into retirement homes. And then Chris Cuomo or uh, Andrew Cuomo lied about the statistics. We're going to find out in a few years, uh, maybe a year, maybe two, that there weren't 30,000 or 40,000 people that died from um, being stuck back in retirement homes. But it's probably closer to 60,000. This guy is just, and they're joking about it. I don't want to hear about how Trump didn't take COVID seriously. I mean, we've got now three vaccines that have been approved by the FDA, thanks to Operation Warp Speed by Trump and him encouraging these people to come up, the f big pharma, to come up with a vaccine. Three vaccines in nine months, which is unheard of. The average is like five years. And he didn't take it, and Trump didn't take it seriously. Meanwhile, these jokers are messing around about when he mismanaged his state so badly. It's so disgusting. Uh, Chris Cuomo is an idiot. Don't get me wrong. Andrew Cuomo, not much smarter. Though I do think he's smarter than Chris Cuomo. Because Chris Cuomo looked really bad. And just about everyone would say it was one of the worst interviews ever made. How CNN keeps Chris Cuomo employed, I have no idea. But then again, they keep, they keep Jim Acosta uh, employed, and he has said some stupid crap. As a matter of fact, he said something really stupid today. So, I don't know how they keep the, all these people employed. Now, the other thing, I, I always said Democrats cannot control the Senate, the House, and the presidency, because they will F this country up beyond all belief. And the media is pushing the effing up of the country if the Democrats take control of the Senate, the House, and the uh, presidency. Now, it doesn't look like they're actually going to control the Senate. There's about a 40% chance they'll control the Senate, but, I mean, it's close. I, I'm really worried on, uh, about the uh, Georgia election, on Jan runoff election in on January 6th. We just need one guy to win. We should have two, but we'll see what happens. But... Listen to what the media says about packing the Supreme Court and ending the filibuster. The way that we restore fairness is for Congress uh, to pass an act expanding the court. There is nothing in the Constitution that says there has to be nine Supreme Court justices. If Joe Biden wins, Democrats can sack the courts. Are you in favor of trying to expand the, the numbers of justices on the Supreme Court pack? The Supreme Court potentially changing the number of justices in the court, adding seats to the Supreme Court and getting rid of the filibuster. Do you support those two things? Everybody sticks We're going to have team. to blow up the entire system. <laughs> I only have two things to say about this. One, the Republicans need to win the Senate next week. They have to win the Senate next week because a Democratic House, Senate 
and presidency could be an absolute disaster. Two, teach your kids American history. Teach your kids civics. Teach your kids to understand why things are the way they are. Because you're not getting it from the schools. You're not getting it from the media. You're not getting it from entertainment. It's important to teach your kids American history, American civics, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, why things are, con- are configured the way they're configured, why we have a Second Amendment, why the Second, Am- why the Second Amendment actually came after the First Amendment, and why it, some of this stuff may sound really sexy, like I get free this and free that, and it's not. Tell, teach your kids about the Soviet Union. Teach your kids about the Uyghurs in China. Teach your kids about Che Guevara and Fidel Castro in Cuba. About Hugo Chavez, which in Venezuela, all these people are heroes. Teach them about Marx. Tell them about Bernie Sanders. Educate your kids. Make sure they understand what the hell is going on. And make sure they understand what the consequences are with packing the court or ending the filibuster. It's a bad thing. Teach them what a filibuster is. I guarantee you most of your kids don't even know what that is. They just think it's some guy going up there and talking for hours. It is. But why that happens? I, I, this was a learning year. We need to learn. We need to stop trusting other people to educate not just our kids, but friends and everything else. I convinced four people to vote for Trump this past election. Four people. They even came to me and said, I voted for Trump like you said, like you told me to. Not, I didn't tell them to do anything. I convinced them to. I explained why Trump is safe and why Democrats are really dangerous when they have this kind of power. Now, believe it or not, if you go to my show notes at www.dumbassestalkingpolitics.com, I've literally got one line after this clip. I I have a lot to say, and it really bothers me now that I listen to it as an individual clip. But I am passionate about it. Because you know something? I'm reading about the United States history right now, and I didn't know half the crap that... Honestly, I I probably should have known. I, I, I never really read the Constitution. I never really read the Federalist Papers. I never really read the Declaration of Independence. Like, a lot of people think, oh, well, God has a lot to do with our Constitution. And in actuality, it doesn't. It's a secular document. I I needed to read the stuff to learn about it. And I think when I start teaching, when I start talking to people, and you can do this too, and you can talk in a way that you can add facts and things like that, it does work. I mean, American history, the Great Awakening, which happened in the 1600s, had a lot to do with the Constitution. Well, how? How, you might ask? Well, I'm going to tell you later. Because the reality is this stuff's really important on how the United States was made. It was almost $200 before the United States, 200 years, excuse dollars, 200 years before the United States became the United States. And a lot of things went into it. And it was tyranny that taught us how we should not be. Okay, I'm sorry. I went on a tangent. This is, I don't feel bad for going on a tangent because this is a, a year-end special. So I, I, I want to actually go um, longer here. Anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. So, (laughs) the next part. Should not be a real crunch for you. It's about the protection of Joseph Biden. While he had all of his lids, right? I never even heard the term lid. Because no presidential candidate had ever hidden in his basement. As much as Joe Biden hid in his basement. No presidential candidate had ever not been questioned like Joe Biden has not been questioned. No presidential candidate had ever had the control of what 
uh, blessed reporters could ask questions like Biden. I mean, this was a man <coughs> who had a long form interview with Cardi B, who, if you don't know, not exactly our intellectual superior when it comes to politics. Oh my God, Cardi B. Just listen to WAP if you have any questions about it. So let's listen to this little compilation. This is awesome. Really, your strength is in traveling around the country and connecting with people. You can't do any of that right now. Mr. Vice President, does does that worry you? It's, I don't know. It's like watching a yo-yo. I shouldn't have said it that way. It's like watching. It feels that way. I want to ask. I want <laughs> President Trump says offensive things. He never apologizes for it. Is there a double standard here? When you hear these remarks, suckers, losers, what does it tell you about President Trump's soul? Why isn't Joe Biden angrier about all of this? Joe Biden, just a guy in his basement talking to a gal in her. Do you think wearing a mask projects strength or weakness? Go ahead. No, no, I probably best I don't. That is another clip that probably could have gone on for 30 minutes. I mean, uh, one of the things Grabian didn't do is put in the gaffes that he has had over his 50 years in politics and everything everyone thinks that biden's going to change things been in politics for 50 years and did nothing i would say the media probably cost by a cost trump 10 to 15 points because here's the thing you're listening to this podcast, which means you're listening to alternative political views. That's great. Maybe some people don't agree with me. That's great. I have no problem with that. But the problem is the media is only giving one view and most people don't listen to anything but what they want to listen to. I'm guilty of that too. I, I do have a subscription to the New York Times because I think the New York Times is awful. I have a, I, I, I watch Vox. I look at a um, uh, bunch of other places. But I can't watch CNN. I can't watch MSNBC. I, I just can't. I do watch some Fox. I've, I've really cut down on my Fox because I don't think they're as conservatives as made themselves out to be. But people don't know what's going on. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So, I mean, here are some of the things they've ignored. They've ignored Biden's gaffes. Biden, who said you can't walk into a 7-Eleven unless you have a slight Indian accent. Biden, who said that Barack Obama was good-looking, articulate, and clean. They ignored Biden's policies. Packing the court. Ending the filibuster. Biden never answered and he was never pushed. Ignored the fact that Biden was ineffective for 50 years. You know, that would have been one of the questions. Hello, you're saying that you're going to reform the country, but you've been in politics for 50 years. You were a senator for 50 years. You were, you were the president of the Senate for half that time. You were VP for eight years. What have you accomplished in all that time? Just a ask the question. They ignored the quid pro quo in Ukraine. I mean, he was on television saying there was a quid pro quo. He ignored his relationship with China. They ignored his very questionable wealth generation. Why is it Joe Biden owns two mansions in when he earns one hundred and seventy thousand dollars? I couldn't. I, I earned one hundred and twenty, hundred thirty thousand dollars at one time. I couldn't afford more than one home. How do you have two mansions at one hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year? Don't talk to me about Doctor Jill. First off, she's not a doctor. She had her doctorate less than 10 years ago. She was not earning that kind of money. Even if they made $200,000 a year, they couldn't afford what they have. They never asked him a hard question. 
And then you go to the debates, which were really fixed. The moderators always shielded Biden against Trump's assaults on his policies. Even um, even Fox News uh, de- uh, protected Biden. Chris Wallace protect- protected Biden from his uh, from Trump's assaults, though Trump really created a lot of that on his own. And finally, and finally, why did the media ignore the biggest story that should have lost Biden the election? The Hunter Biden laptop and emails and pictures and videos, all of them are on the internet, and yet they ignored it. Well, let's listen to the media explain why they ignored it. Obviously, uh, we're not going with the uh, New York Post story uh, right now on Hunter Biden. This is really one of the stupidest October surprises I've ever seen. It helps to really view this as storytelling, not so much as news coverage, but as political entertainment. NPR explained We don't want to waste our time on stories that are not really stories. Who even thought to make that story up? It's a story that many intelligence experts say has all the hallmarks of a foreign interference campaign. It looks like it's tied to Vladimir Putin in Moscow. This is a Russian intelligence disinformation campaign. It's a foreign intelligence operation. Foreign intelligence operation. Russian intelligence. Rudy Giuliani was not fed passively Russian disinformation. He ordered it off the menu. And this is a classic example of the right-wing media machine. And he's in the midst of a scandal. He's not. And he's taking... He's of course not. he is, no. Leslie. We should note Hunter Biden isn't running for president. That argument has been debunked. There is no evidence that Joe Biden did anything wrong. For all we know, these emails are made up. It just lacks credibility. Okay, I would love if you guys would start doing that FBI's... digging and start doing that verification. No, we're not going to do your work for you. Hunter Biden would have destroyed Joe Biden. He's a hot mess, and we don't even know the entire story yet. What we do know, he took money from the Chinese energy company because of Joe Biden. Joe Biden's name. We know that because Hunter admitted it on television. He took money from a Ukrainian energy company because of Joe Biden's name. How do we know that? He admitted it. He has a crack habit. How do we know that? Well, they got him on video with smoke and crack. He has been impregnating strippers. Okay, let me change that. He impregnated a stripper. How do we know that? She sued him for child support. He is under investigation for tax fraud and tax evasion. This happened since 2018. They've been investigating him. All this is known. We didn't need his laptop, which, by the way, he was so high on crack, he didn't realize he dropped it out and never and dropped it off and never picked it up. We know this is all true. The U.S. government, the FBI, has the laptop. And they're investigating. Here's what we don't know. But we have some suspicions. He was having sex with underage girls when he was in China. There is is video with him, him having sex with girls in China. There is video. It's out there. You can look at it. If you search for it, you can look at it. It's on a Chinese freedom groups server. It is Hunter Biden. There's no question. I've seen it. Unless you, if you want to be disgusted, go out and look at it. But it's there. We're just not sure if they're underage yet. Rumor has it, it is. His laptop had child porn on it. Again, nothing's been confirmed. The stuff on the internet may say enough. But the fact of the matter is, we don't know. And finally, there's emails that there's emails and there's actual um, testimony that says that Hunter was funneling money to Joe. 
That might explain Joe Biden. That might explain some of the reason that Joe Biden is so rich, even though he's only earning $170,000 a year. And Jill Biden, who has an EDD, she's a freaking PhD in education. She's not making that much. Okay? Hey, if you have a heart attack, don't call Dr. Jill. You get called 911. And you're, you, if you are at dinner and you are having a heart attack, dial 911. Dr. Jill is not going to help you. Okay, she's not making that much money. Where is all this money coming from? But we now have emails that say that Hunter was funneling money to Joe. And we also have eyewitnesses, I think multiple now, that say he was funneling money to Joe. Corruption. Here's the thing that really... The media never actually investigated any of this stuff. And I think there was a reason. They wanted Biden in the White House. Okay, now there's a a decent chance he's going to get in the White House. I say a decent chance. We're going to talk about this on Monday. I don't think it's a a 100% at all now. After what I read on the Epoch Times and what I've heard on the Dan Bongino show. I don't think it's 100%. But this stuff is impeachable. If there's any type of corruption, like we think there might be, this is all impeachable stuff. On corruption, uh, probably some fraud, probably some tax evasion. There's a lot of stuff here that's, that's impeachable. This is enough stuff to lead to a Biden resignation. That might explain why the media never covered Hunter Biden before. Now suddenly they're covering him. And this just shows you how corrupt our country is is becoming. Finally, the second to last story. In 2016, you saw nothing but tears of despair for Trump winning the election. Now, this is not just from Hillary supporters at her um, gathering during election night or from those crazy people that were sitting on Washington in Washington DC screaming at the world you know remember they actually had a gathering just to scream because Trump won this is also from our quote unbiased end quote media well this past election we see nothing but tears of joy from this quote unbiased end quote media Listen to this. This is really pathetic. It's pathetic. Listen up. Character matters. It matters. Telling the truth matters. Being a good person matters. I don't know why I'm crying so much. I keep crying. I'm going to cry now. (laughs) Go away from me. You're going to make me cry. I was talking to a Democrat who just said this also felt like the Avengers. It felt like we're being rescued from this this <laughs> craziness that we've all lived through from the last four years, and now here are the superheroes to come and save us all. I mean, all I have to say is everybody look up because it's a different way of living now, right? Get- if you're an immigrant, you don't have to worry if the president's going to be happier to have babies snatched away or send, send dreamers back for no re- reason. <laughs> we don't care who you are. We don't care if you voted for us or not. This is vindication for a lot of people who have really suffered. (sighs) Jesus Christ. The bias is overwhelming. And some of that was from MSNBC, which is biased anyway. But most of this came from CNN, which isn't supposed to be biased. This is part of the reason why people don't trust the media anymore. And they're going to other sources of news. They keep screaming about how uh, the biased media, the the legacy media, keep screaming about how they're unbiased journalists. And then they cry when they don't get what they want, or they cry when they do get what they want. It's too obvious for them to have any relevancy when it comes to reporting the news or being journalists or whatever they think they are. Now, my father watches OAN, and he, uh, which is One American News, and he says he watches it because it is real news. 
I like One American News. But they have their biased news. They're biased towards conservatism. Here's the thing. There's a big difference between the bias from the leftists and the bias from conservatives. Leftist bias is very negative. They hate our country. America is a bad country, and it needs to be changed from the bottom up. We need to ignore our history and the great things that we have done in order to accept the fact that all the bad things that we have done outweighs those good things that we've done. We need to change the country. Conservative bias is completely the opposite. It's overwhelmingly positive. If you have any doubt, watch on YouTube, go and watch a Trump um, rally and watch a Biden rally. It's, there's a big difference between the rallies. Our country, according to conservatives, is special and unique. It's exceptional. Our country is m- m- the most powerful and successful country in world history. We have brought billions throughout the world out of poverty, out of sickness. We embrace all aspects of our history. Because it shows how exceptional we are. We had slavery, but we fought a civil war to end it because slavery is evil. We had Jim Crow, but we created laws that ended Jim Crow because it was evil. Women couldn't vote, but we ended up giving them the right to vote because the reason is not allowing women to vote is evil because women are human beings. We also did little things like defeated the tyranny of Nazi Germany, defeated the tyranny of Soviet Union, defeated the tyranny of empire of, J- of the Empire of Japan. We have kept bay the tyranny of Iran, Cuba, North Korea. We have flexed our muscle when we needed to do it. We have tolerated our country's evils. But we have gone through steps to correct those evils. This is why the left cannot tolerate our history. Because we have the moments where that evil is in our past. It doesn't exist anymore. They can't say, they can't say we're systemat- systemically racist if we show, no, we ended systemic racism in the 1963 or 64, I can't remember, Civil Rights Act. They can't say we ended systemic sexism when we point to women's suffrage in 1920. And we've got some bad things. But you know what? True Americans embrace those things so they don't forget. What's really scary is that All of the sexism, racism, the bigotry, I like bigotry because it's an easier word, is being dumped on conservatives right now. And we have to forget about the fact that there is, there is, how shall I put it? We have to forget our history on defeating tyranny because the left wants to be tyrannical. The left wants to put Americans who have conservative values, religious, free speech, you want to own a gun, they want to put you in jail for that. This is why 2021 has been described as the new 1776 because conservatives aren't taking it anymore. And it's it's going to end. It's got to end. The left cannot handle American history because American history is exceptional. We have done everything wrong in our history. And step by step, we've corrected it. And this brings us to Mika Brzezinski flipping out.
this is kind of a bonus one. I wasn't actually going to include this, but then I I thought about it and I said, yeah, I should include this. And I already said this is going to be at least an hour because this is a year-end special. So let's do it. So let's listen to Mika Brzezinski and then let's talk about this. And yes, these are my longest diatribes. I apologize if you want to break this up into two episodes. That's no problem. But let's listen to Mika Brzezinski because she's going to make my point here. This president looks more ridiculous. Wake up! Talk about ditzy. Talk about a ditzy, stupid, botched response. It's idiotic. And you're terrible. You're wrong. How stupid can you be? If you're sensing a little intensity here, I'm a little amp. That was a very short clip. And again, that clip could have been 20 minutes long if Gravy had decided to do it. Mika can't stand Donald Trump. But that's not what I want to point out. I don't care about that. She's on MSNBC, which is a leftist news network. They don't dispute it. I expect to hear disparaging remarks about Trump. No biggie. And I'm not going to condemn her. I'm not going to condemn MSNBC. I don't think it's necessary. I know what you're going to hear on MSNBC if I turn to the station. But here's what I do condemn. And here's what scares the crap out of me. It's the absolute hate she shows. Trump said in a speech, and it was probably going to be his greatest line, they don't hate you because they hate me. They hate me because they hate you. This is absolutely true. When Mika and the rest of the media exclaim hate for Trump, they're expressing hate who any, for anyone who believes in America being exceptional, in America being better than the left has. And then when someone sits there and points that out, they want those people dumped in gulags and tortured and worked to death. They want them to starve. Look at what's happening now that Trump's lost. Twitter is saying they're going to completely ban him. And I believe that's probably going to be true because they don't want Trump influencing anyone anymore. And he is a major influence in the Republican Party. And we're going to see that next week when we talk on Monday about this discovery I had, thanks to Dan Bongino, we're going to talk about what's going to happen when they try and certify these votes. I think it's going to be a thing. I think next week is going to be the most exciting week, possibly in American history. And I, yeah, I'm not exaggerating. The reality is these people do not love us. They don't care about us. And Biden, who keeps talking about bringing America together, together, he doesn't want to bring America together. He wants us to shut the F up. That's what he wants. The left doesn't want us together. They hate us. They hate our values. They want. They hate the fact that we like free speech. They hate the fact that we like freedom of religion. They hate the fact that we like to protest peacefully. They hate the fact that um, uh, they hate freedom of press because the press who is my dumbass of the year. The press doesn't want freedom of press. They want you to listen to what they have to say. That includes Fox News. They don't want OAN or Newsbusters out there. They don't want the Daily Wire or the Blaze out there. They want us silenced. And if we're not silenced... They want us prosecuted. And if we have guns, it's going to be a lot harder to prosecute us because we'll fight back. They want us thrown in jail. They want us beaten. They want us dead. If you don't believe that, all you have to do is look at what Hollywood is saying right now. Unity? That's not what the left wants. 
Watch the entire Grabian clip on YouTube and subscribe to YouTube, uh, to Grabian on YouTube and get and make sure you get notifications because they've got a lot of great crap, a ton. They've released two or three videos since this video. If you want to look at the full video, because there's a lot more, I covered 12 of like 20. Go to dumbassestalkingpolitics.com and be sh and take a look at the video. It's amazing. And it's going to be far more impactful than anything I I said today. You can follow me uh, on uh, great. Uh, you can follow me on Parlor at Dumbasses Talking Politics. You can follow me on Twitter at Run and Fool, uh, R U N N I N F E W L. I may not be on Twitter much longer, simply because if they get rid of Trump, I, I don't see a point to stick with them. You can uh, download or listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, and YouTube. Um, visit my website at www.dumbassestalkingpolitics.com. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful new year. 2021 is going to be phenomenal. Everyone take care. Have a great new year. Very safe new year. <laughs>